Hello and welcome to the Musty Creative Podcast. I am your host, Jesus Nolan, and I am joined by my friend and yours... Margaret. Okay, <laughs> Margaret is here today. <laughs> Michelle took a little bit of a break, but that's okay. Thank you for joining us today, even though it's musty in here because we've been working too hard. Uh, if this is your first time listening to us, we are the Musty Collective and we motivate ourselves to become better storytellers. Storytellers! Today, I have a wonderful storyteller, a good friend of mine. We go back many days. Special guest, welcome to the show, Joshua Regis. Hello! Yes, hello, everybody! <laughs> hello! <laughs> yes, yeah, so today, we have a great storyteller. Hopefully, he shares with us some of his stories. When you get him in a room and he gets just, he's like, hey, everybody, listen, hush. And he just starts telling his story. It's exciting. Kind of wraps you. Kind of like feeling like that old, like ancient, you know, around the fire, sitting around, stuff like that. Yeah, I was Anyways, about to say, because normally when I enter a room, I'd be sure there's ample room for a campfire. There we go. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. So let's start the show. Okay, so, uh, Josh, uh, buddy, good friend of mine, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Really appreciate it. You, sir, are officially part of the Musty Collective. You are Musty Creative. Welcome. Thanks. Thank you for the, uh, the Musty Creative title. Uh, yeah, it was no problem. I mean, you know, the 20 bucks really helped me a lot. <laughs> yeah, so if you if you join the show, you'll get 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. No, 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 no. Uh-huh. That's not true. That's not true. We did not pay Josh. I was told there would be a check. No. Oh, you were told? I was told there'd be a check. And and you were... More like a gift card. Yeah. A gift yeah. card? Yeah. <laughs> well, as long as it's to a gas station, I'm perfectly fine. Otherwise, I'm going to be here for a while. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, right now, I think in the place that we are in, you're, you're going to be perfectly safe <laughs> yeah. and comfortable. <clears throat> um, we are in the studio. Studio, ladies and gentlemen, we are happy today to be here to bring you another musty creative podcast. Um, so let's just get into it. Josh, how do we meet? Uh, I saw you one day. Yes, uh, I think it was at the church, right? Yes. The church is where church. I saw you for the first time. Yes, over in Victorville. Yeah, it was a Friday night, I think. <clears throat> I think it was for youth. Yeah, um, it was evening, mm-hmm. and we were kind of cuddling, comfortable together. Um, it was mm-hmm. nice. It was warm. Um, it was, well, yeah. it was our cuddling that made it warm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh huh. What is happening? Yes. Yeah, there was a lot of weird feelings. Yes. Um, you know, you had the itchy sweater. Yes, I did. <laughs> no, uh, we we were I think a youth group. Yeah, I it was think, a right. Youth group. It was youth group. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, we just then the the following Sabbath on Saturday we we went to church and yeah. uh, we, we were both in high school. Yeah. yeah, we were both in high school together. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Well, not together, but we were in high school at the same time. But yes. In the high school youth group. Uh-huh. Pastor Milton Beltran. I just want to give a shout out to him because he meant so much to me as a mentor. Yeah. What do you yeah. think? I had him, you know, do my wedding because exactly. You know, he was uh, he, he was a big influence to me. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And so, um, I was a, a big loner at that time. Um, big one loner. Yeah. Yeah. And so back in my uh, high school, because I was going from, you know, going from the valley up into the Victor Valley. I was a complete nerd, loner, mm-hmm. and so when I got to Victorville, I was trying to like make a new name for myself, but Josh and his friends were the, actually like the first people who welcomed me into their group. Oh, that's nice. Uh, yeah. Kenneth and Kevin, I believe. Yeah. Right? Well, it was, it was really first you. Mm-hmm. you actually, he actually talked to me and said, hey, what do you think? And then you introduced me to this world of pop culture. And Did I, I really? Yeah. Did I introduce you to the world? Yeah, you really, well, oh, you were one of the first people. You. Yeah, because I, I knew about Star Wars, but you took me, you took my hand. And you walk me into the larger universe of Star Wars. Your... <laughs> no, my head. Copyright. My... Copyright. I just, just wanted to stop. Yeah, I'm not implying. Right. Yeah. They don't want to continue this song. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so um, I think a lot of our, our initial conversations um, were surrounding a game, an old MMO game called Star Wars Galaxies. And... Yes, uh, that was uh, 
Man, that was fun, huh? Yeah. Memories. Back in the day. Back in the day. And I still have a friend who just won't let go of it. Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> or, Actually, or another we're, going, friend? we're going deeper. Another we're going friend. Anthony. <laughs> yeah. So he's still living that life yes, somehow. Yes, sir. Man. In the, the underbelly of the internet servers. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he's still living that life. Yeah. Just can't give it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things I always hold fondly to because, you know, we had adventures. You know, I remember this one time I got my pet do back for all you hardcore Star Wars fans. Rex. Yeah, I don't Rex. Know what that is. Yeah, it, it's a, it's a large lizard green. You see you see the do back in the New Hope in the special oh, okay. edition. Okay, I think I know. He's yeah. in the the stormtrooper right? riding it. Yeah. Yeah, that made the weird noise. Yeah, and some some mm-hmm. you know messed up <laughs> dude just stole him from me, and then Josh. Well, okay. First off, he didn't just steal it from you. Yeah. I got hey, bamboozled. You, you got bamboozled. <laughs> yes. You, you, you actually, you were too boozled to bam. <laughs> you, uh, yeah. you know, were so innocent. Yes, I was. Uh, so you remember was... what he told me? Because my Rex was sick, uh-huh. and he said, "Hey, he looks sick. I think if you trade him over to me, I'll oh, heal him for you." No. <laughs> exactly. And you were like, "Oh, oh no, yeah. he's sick." Yeah. It's like yeah, his skin. If you're not careful, he'll he'll die. Right, and I thought it was like, uh, what's it called? What's it called in games where it's like forever death? Like, oh, in a permadeath. Permadeath. I thought it was oh, permadeath no. kind of thing. Death by perm. Yeah. Worst. <laughs> the worst kind. The yeah. worst kind. Yeah. You look silly in that casket. Oh my goodness. Yes. And and so yeah, he he he. I traded it over to this guy, and then he just ran. He he got Rex. And he just got on him That's and so rode him mean. away. Yeah, yeah. That's horrible. And I just pinged Josh and Josh. He was he was he was all snot bubbles. He's like, oh. Rex, I took Rex. You know, yeah. in the Anchorman, that yeah. when he's just <laughs> unconsolable. Yeah. Oh, you know, man, what up, every yeah. Go. yeah. It was like that. Yeah. But you know, and I remember I was like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. And he's like, he took Rex. Took Rex. I'm like, how did he take him? Yeah. I traded him over. I'm like, oh, there's your problem. <laughs> he traded it over to some exactly. guy. How old um 16 17 years old yeah yeah Yeah, but i mean you actually raised it from an egg right no no uh no i got him as a baby i did as a baby baby. Uh okay but yeah it was i we like me and rex me and rex were like like peas in the pod Mm -hmm. we're just everything that was like like i never had that same relationship with a dog then I have that in my virtual. Your own. And it's real because dog. that's yeah. the reason why you won't have a dog now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Still, I'm still hurting. Yeah. I'm still hurting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Deep cuts, deep cuts. Yeah, but then, uh, you know, I took the initiative. And yes, I, you did. I Without had, me even asking. Well, you know, I had a couple of friends. Yes. And the some bounty shady. Honey, shady, <laughs> shady business. Because people what, owed me some stuff. What was your. Uh, Smuggler. Well, you're a smuggler. That's right. Oh. So yeah. I, I had a I had a couple of friends and some I, dirty bandits. Yeah, I got mm. a couple of information and I was yeah. able to ping some information on him. Yes. Mm-hmm. Found out where he was. Right. Because there was a guy <laughs> working for the uh, Imperial Syndicate at the time. Uh-huh. Yeah. And well, not Syndicate. <laughs> Michelle's but, like, yeah, uh huh. <laughs> not not alert. Alert. <laughs> well, the Imperial regime, not Syndicate. Yeah. Uh-huh. Different. Uh huh. And uh, I I was able to find out where this person was yeah. not long ago, and it turned out it was relatively close to where I was on Rory, oh. which is a small planet outside of Naboo. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. So uh, <clears throat> yeah, that was pretty dope, right? Yeah, it was. So, yes. You're like a sleuth. <laughs> anyway, so I, uh, <laughs> I I just hopped over there and. Uh, um, I forgot what ship I had at the time. I don't know if I had my. I don't know if you had the Falcon at that time. The well, it wasn't the Falcon, but yeah. Yeah, you had some ship close to a YT thirteen hundred. It, it was a YT thirteen hundred. But I, I, yeah, I forget the name of it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I had that one yet, or if I still had this other one, which I called the Lucky Charm. Mm-hmm. But, oh yeah, the Lucky Charm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so um, it's like a marshmallow that floats. Yeah, in. <laughs> exactly, and it's delicious. Uh, <laughs> some would say magically delicious. <laughs> but uh, I, um, I remember tracking him down, and I uh, messaged him like, "Hey." Yeah. Uh, you took my friend's do back like a couple of hours ago. Yeah, wow. yeah. What's, you know, I would like to have it back. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, you know, he said some very un nice things. That I won't mm-hmm. repeat. And so I just destroyed him. Yeah. <laughs> and then I took him back from his remains, and I also took his hyperdrive unit because it was better than mine. <laughs> and I just took all that stuff that I could and left. And then I found you. Yes. You mm-hmm. were. I think, I, were went were I think I went to Corellia. I think you were on Corellia. I went to Corellia. 
mm-hmm. and I remember tracking you down, yeah. and so I went to him like, hey, I got a present for you. Yeah. And you're like, what? What is it? And then I, and you're like, Rex. Yeah. Aww, it's like that yeah. reunion. Yeah. Uh-huh. And the- Man, and, and that's what that's why I love about that game uh-huh. is you have that organic gameplay um, that most games don't like. You can do it technologically, but to have the designers ha- be in that mode to mm-hmm. you know build that kind of organic gameplay. Just amazing kind of stuff. It was fun. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, I think I think it was you anyway. Yeah. You're the one that helped me when I tried to slice the bank terminal to get credits out of it. I think so. <laughs> I think so. And then uh, the Imperials are there, and so I'm like, oh, crap. Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. And then you were there, and so you just kind of got me out of there. Yeah. And then what kind of wrapped up for our friendship with that game was, you know, my character's name was called Clow. And your character, Cloud-coon? yeah, Cloud. That's right, Cloud Coon, Cloud for short. And then your your character's name was Tito. That's right. Wow. So we had the adventures, <laughs> the adventures of Cloud and Tito, mm-hmm. which led to a little tiny comic book that I made. Yep, a little really? comic strip. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, Josh that's is around. actually a really good artist. He uh-huh. can draw very beautifully. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I I doodle. I'm very good at doodling. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit more than doodling because what I do is doodle. Oh. What Josh does is draw. Okay. I draw. That's a good one. I yeah. am a drawer. <laughs> I draw. I draw. Yeah. And then and so yeah, just over the years, you know, talking over about stories and mm-hmm. and and different things, I always got from you this sense of like a deep fondness for the art of storytelling. Um, and so we would go back and forth about theories and and lore mm-hmm. in Star Wars. And I'm a big fan of lore. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter if I'm a fan of. Of the actual property, as right. long as it's the lore, I'm right. a, I just mm-hmm. I love it. I right, love it. like Doctor Who. Right, uh-huh. I'm not a huge Doctor Who fan, but there is a lot of lore behind right. Doctor Who. So, right, you know I respect that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and I think like for us, that's that's where we really would have those long conversations over the phone. And this is back before like you text each other a lot, and, <laughs> mm-hmm. and like we had all the social media and stuff. We literally uh-huh. would be on the phone for like four or five minutes, an hour, two hours, just talking about lore mm-hmm. and just going over and over it. So. Mm-hmm. You know, where we see gaming going next, um, there's a lot when it comes to games, uh, games of the service, you know, um, games like Fortnite, just continuous updates, right? We have Apex Legends out now, we have yes. Anthem, mm-hmm. um, and even things like Red Dead 2 with its online mode, Destiny, which you've played a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, where do you see games as, as a a serious storytelling medium, even though we have these continuous live updates, you see it as a good thing, as a positive thing for the game industry, or something that needs to be kind of curtailed. Well, you know, more content is always a good thing. Yeah. Um, the the only thing that I, I guess when it comes to updates is then when it's not free. Yeah. Uh, that's true. That you know that's the only real issue that I have now. The if the the thing, the one exception to that yeah. is if. The game was free to begin with. Right. No, I can see that. Like Fortnite or yeah. Apex Legends, it's completely free. Right. Uh, if, if that's the case, okay, I'll put ten dollars down, open up this chest, yes. or buy this outfit. Right. You know. Um, but if it's something you pay a premium for, like right. say Destiny Two, and you pay sixty bucks, you pay sixty mm-hmm. bucks just right. for this game. Mm-hmm. Then you know, then that when it comes to DLCs, then I'll have. Well, DLCs are the thing is a little bit different. Yeah. But I mean, if it's like updates you have to pay for, I, I'm not really that. I don't really care too much for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think eh, it's good. You know, having new stories is fun. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there is there a game that or a, a, a game a series of games or a franchise that you think is doing it well? I know also you like playing Assassin's Creed as far as the storytelling aspect, and then then the live updates and things like that. There is one game in particular uh, that I think uh, is kind of like a shining example, okay. but only because it needs to be. Okay. And that is No Man's Sky. Yes. Oh, oh they. D- yes, No Man's Sky. They, they yeah. really, they really had no choice. Yes, <laughs> you're right. None. Yeah. But even after they fix it, they continue. Yeah. To update it for zero money. Yeah, and it's getting to the point where it's it's up there now. Yeah, I mean it's getting really good. People are still there. Mm -hmm. They they fixed all the issues they had with it. You can do a little bit of multiplayer now with this big update they had called Next. Yes, last summer. Um, and it's doing really well. I went to replay it. Yeah, 
it's very it's doing very very well they update yeah. it almost all the time and yeah. the bugs they fix it all the time yeah and they also just announced a newer one that's coming out this year beyond yeah. right mm-hmm. which they said well it's a three they're releasing in three sections the first one is going to be their online version yeah and that like so it's already online so like what more online can it be you know <clears throat> well the thing is that the one thing they, he mentioned in particular is yeah. that when you want to play with people you join their game and when, and when we say then, him you're talking about sean murray uh, yes sean okay. murray okay uh when when you play that game and you join somebody else's game right and but the progress you make there is lost when you join back oh, your game. oh okay they're making it so that all progress is shared throughout you leave an area and then you'll they'll just happen to have six people already populating this particular location right and then you can make a group and then they can just hop in you know and do what you want to do that's awesome um and so that's i think that's really cool they had this really cool like underwater base building thing that they yes, did, it did with yeah. actual submarines right. and stuff like that too well you know it's interesting because the popularity of another fun little game that's sort of like no man's sky but not as large uh, but Subnautica. Yep. Right. I feel like because mm-hmm. of Subnautica's popularity, they're like, hey, you know, let's do let's do underwater base building because we can do you it. Know, hey, you know, I'm I'm happy for the success of yeah. Subnautica. Yeah. Uh, it looks beautiful from it what does. I've seen. I refuse to play it <laughs> uh, because of it's in the ocean and everything in the ocean is evil. Otherwise, <laughs> why would it be in the ocean? Well, right? what about? I mean, water is in the ocean. Is water evil? Well, well yes, water is evil. Okay. Eventually, right. I because I don't know why this is. I should probably see a doctor. Right. I drink too much water. Yeah. And it makes my throat dr- more dry. <laughs> I do not understand <laughs> this. I don't know. If I chug water, I keep treat. Yeah. It's like, it's like if my body's like, whoa, we're getting too much water. Yeah. No more saliva for the day. Oh. And so I'm just like, <laughs> and I can't. So I'm like, bring the soda. Give me soda. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. The life juice that is <laughs> soda. <laughs> But but as I think we all can agree that the second trailer, the the first full movie trailer for Aladdin live action was amazing. And I think it blew everyone away. Mm-hmm. The music they finally gave us words. We saw them singing, you know, a whole yeah. new world. I mean, honestly, I'm psyched for the movie. Now I had said well, previously, even though I was critical of the first mm-hmm. teaser trailer, I was still going to see the movie. I'm definitely going to go see Aladdin now. Well, the teaser trailer I liked. Mm-hmm. I, you know, when you saw the the desert, yeah, when you saw kind of like Iago flying by. I mean, that was, was really, great. It was that really was dark for some reason. Yeah, yeah. but it's. And I was like, okay, I'm I'm down for right. it. And then you know, ended with when you see Aladdin reach for the lamp. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh yeah. Yeah. And then they released the first look. Right. Uh, where you see the genie. Yeah. Right. And so I was just like, all right. I mean, for me, I was just like, <laughs> I was just kind of like. Yeah, it's a Blue Will Smith. I didn't know what I was expecting right. other than that. Right. You know, right. I was like, okay. Right. Uh, I saw that and immediately I was just like, mm-hmm. doesn't matter. I'm going to see it anyway. Yeah, no, no. That, <laughs> that, that was my thing. I was critical, but I still, I'm still going to see it. But let's let's break down this, this second trailer real quick. Yeah, so, sure. Go for so it. So I, I think the, the first thing that they do is they show us more footage of Agrabah. Which is great. A footage of what? Agrabah. Am I saying it right? Yeah, you said it right. Oh, okay. No, it sounded like you said Agrabah. Yeah, see, he's, he's checking me again for... Yeah, he's checking me. <laughs> right, so, That's my thing. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, Aladdin's running through the streets, right? He's yes. a street rat yeah. doing yeah. his thing. Yeah. That was great. Great action, him jumping off the of the, the house. Parkour! Right. <laughs> I <don't> know. <laughs> Office. And then, yeah. and then he has that shot where he comes through the opening over this, like, little um, overpass, uh-huh. gets into the marketplace, and Jasmine turns around. The, the, the flower petals are, are coming down. I was like, okay, we good now. Like, this is uh-huh. this is some chemistry, some on-screen chemistry. I'm liking that. Mm-hmm. Because, if, if honestly, if, if they fail, yeah. the movie fails, no matter no matter what mm-hmm. happens, right? Okay, let's now, go through it. Okay, so you saw the agar bar. Right, right, bar, right. Bar, right. Bar. <laughs> and uh, you see the, uh, you know, then you see the jasmine thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and you're like... <gasps> Right, you know, and right. Then, it, then all of a sudden you see. Uh, uh, oh, Jafar! Jafar, Jafar yeah. says, "Oh, I can make you rich." Yeah, I can make you rich. Right, uh-huh. so and then uh, I was like, "I can make you rich." Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm so scary and frightening. Right, right. <laughs> and it, 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 we'll talk about that. That Jaf- wasn't uh, what. No, that's I, didn't, I didn't have an issue with his voice. That oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I do, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> I meet you. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then of course they go uh, to the Cave of Wonders. The Cave of- now, uh, I think the shot outside of Cave of Wonders every time they show it is amazing. Mm-hmm. But this was even better because they showed the actual like 
tiger lighting up. Yeah. I thought that was awesome. I didn't see it form. The whole time I'm thinking is, where's the golden beetle? Oh. The pink. Oh, that's and true. It... If You think they'll have that, though. There might be too much. Maybe too much. Maybe too much will be... Probably, for, yeah. For They're like, class. all right, that's not important. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and then... Because um, Jafar wasn't an old crazy old man. Yeah. Yeah, in, yeah. A, in prison. Well, just, this is why I was thinking the Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg should be Jafar. <laughs> <laughs> he look, If you look at pictures of Snoop Dogg, he looks like cartoon Jafar. He, just, he get the beard and everything. He does, yes. He the does. small, but thinnish face. Though. He looks like him. No, the voice would, oh, the voice would be terrible. You, <laughs> yeah. Come on, lad. What's up, Jasmine girl? Yeah, come on, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. yeah. <laughs> right? And then, and so after all that. And it he, turns out he... Iago never spoke. He was just. <laughs> oh, up. Will, Iago, will, will Iago speak? He will. Is we played by Alan Tudyk. Oh, really? Hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's not the voice. Uh, that is uh, uh, Disney's every man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He does everything. Alan Tudyk is doing a lot. But I do miss the, the comedian that played the original guy because I was like... The guy who got in trouble and got kicked off from the Goose commercials. Oh, is that what happened to him? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what happened to him? Yeah, he said some not very good things. Oh. And then he ended up getting fired from Aflac. Oh, so this is why we have Josh in the show. This is what Josh Josh knows those things. But like, yeah, it I happened mean, in 2015. Oh, so very oh, okay. recent. Mm-hmm. Very recent. Okay. Yeah. Okay, very cool. It was in October. He was actually ordering the uh, chicken menu that was over there on that one restaurant called Restaurante, Restaurante de Fuego, and then uh, that. No, I'm just making it up. <laughs> I was like, what? You're like, whoa, what? Yeah, uh, that's watching, a new story. I was, I was watching him. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. Just, he's like, he's watching. one. Who, he's the one who reported him. He's like <laughs> tweeting and Snapchatting him. Like, see, look what he's doing. Yeah. No, um, all right. So then, Genie, he runs the lamp. Yes. We, we talk about that. Genie comes out. Yes. And it's so good. It's big. It looks realistic. It looks great. It looks like uh, this kind of like the CG work they did for Thanos on on Infinity War. So that looks amazing. Mm-hmm. It, and and then um, the he has this dialogue line. Yes. I think I think it was much improved. I still still needs to work on it a little bit, but I really like the performance. And then he does this whole like you never had a friend like me kind of montage, which mm-hmm. I'm excited for that scene now. Mm-hmm. That looks amazing. Yeah. It looks great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a scene at the end of the trailer when you see the rocket flying out before right. you see yeah. the Aladdin letters flip around. Right, right, right. Uh, <clears throat> I think that's, it's part of that scene too. Yeah, yeah. that's in that scene. Mm-hmm. And I actually just saw the uh, animated version. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, you just it, rewatched it? I just rewatched it. Nice. It's identical. Yeah. If you, if you yeah. pause the screen and you see the rocket taken yeah. off, right. you see a pirate ship in the same spot that there's a pirate ship mm. in there with the same sails and nice. colors and everything. Nice. So it's I was like, wow, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Man, I, honestly, like if they can do a one for one for for the from cartoon to live <laughs> action, hey, because the cartoon is a, is a is a great film. Yeah. yeah. And it looks beautiful. But Just all right, imagine so imagine it with fresh prints. Mm-hmm. Oh it's yeah, be amazing. <laughs> and then so after he gets out, then they do the whole like they're on the, they're in the desert talking yeah. about oh. Can I? Can you make me a prince? Yeah. And he's like, "Well, that's what's yeah. that line?" I was like, "There's a lot of gray area." Yeah, yeah. I can make you like, a prince. I can just make you a prince, You're right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or my palace. <laughs> yeah, you don't see my palace. Yeah, <laughs> and so then they start the the montage. Which, if you looked, goes up. It's actually the same colors as Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Oh, the outfit that, that I mean, it's like a like a princely version of it. Right, right, right. But right, if right. you really looked, he's right. got like the same colors. Yeah, as funny. his little. Outfit with and the blue and everything. I think everything they're doing with with uh, Genie's you know human version hair and everything is amazing. Yeah, I'm and fine. then they yeah, get into they do the Agrabah, they do the like hey you know here comes the prince kind of thing, uh-huh. and then they get into you know him and Aladdin have a little bit of repertoire, so they're going back and forth with each other. Yes. that looks nice. Mm-hmm. It looks like the Will, chemistry the is believable. there, and I I really do think that's why you bring in a Will Smith because he's going to get along with everybody. He's going to up everyone else's performance. And really turn on the lights for everybody else. Right. Galaxy's Edge. Yep. Uh, speak on that. Are you excited for that? Is is there? Is Once there, it opens, yeah. you'll never see me again. Right. Until you visit the parks. And right. Then you'll see an old homeless man living in the trash can somewhere. <laughs> That'll be me. Right. You know, they talk about how you're going to be able to have your own adventures, your own unique storylines and mm-hmm. whatnot. And yes. the, there's going to be uh, staff members, you know, with their own backstory. Correct. What does that What does that do to you? Uh, what does that mean to you for what theme parks may become in the future, twenty years down the road? Well, I think uh, when uh, the Harry Potter world opened up at Universal, uh, Disney was like, "We need to step it up." Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I don't know if you went. No, oh, uh, we've been. We've yeah. been. Uh, I went the first time I went. I really could care. I couldn't care about Harry Potter at all. Yeah. yeah. But uh, everyone's talking about it, so I'm like, "All right, I'll have a look." Mm-hmm. I'm right. going to look, and I was like. 
all right, I see what this is about. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I was like, I was like, whoa. Mm-hmm. Especially if you go to the one here in Hollywood. Yes, exactly. You know, you're walking around and you just see Betty Boop and then they're like, oh yeah, there's like little things that look like cardboard. And then all of a sudden you see like what looks like a London town <laughs> right. right in the middle that right. makes zero sense, right next door to uh, uh, Simpsons. Simpsons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then here's this awesome kind of like right. super realistic mm-hmm. area. And the ride they have is yeah. amazing. I have not been on it yet. You haven't? No. Turns out, not big boy friendly. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Okay. It's an amazing experience. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, what's crazy is just how much detail they go into that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so I think Disney saw that, and they're like, we need to do what could have been. But what takes this to the next level, what I really want us to focus on is it's it's the story. Yes. Every character you see has a backstory. Right, you don't just go on like a couple of rides and then you leave the land. Yeah. You it you are in Star Wars the universe for the first time ever. Also, for the first time ever, they're introducing seasons. Yeah, there is a continuous story that's taking place, and that uh, that story will change as the year goes on or the years. Yeah, I'm sure they won't do that until a couple of years later when no one cares about Star Wars land anymore. Then they're going to say, "Oh, season two. Yes, you want to yes. know about this? This yes. is happening, mm-hmm. and they can actively change those things." Yeah. They, they um, also say you can participate in battles, fighting the First Order, mm-hmm. or maybe you get to choose your side with the Resistance or First Order. There, Will those battles affect the story? You think it could? I yeah. guess. I mean, the thing that the, that they have said was a major effect was the Millennium Falcon attraction. Yes, was that uh, Hondo Anaka from the Clone Wars? He has, he has oh, the that's Falcon. Good. That's good, yeah. Uh, he has the Falcon, and because of that, you know, Chewbacca uh, was willing to loan him the Falcon right. uh, so that he would get the the rare pieces that it needs. Because right. the Falcon, during New Hope, was already kind of a rare ship to begin with, mm-hmm. falling apart. And right. now that this movie takes place... This like is post-Force Awakens? Uh, this takes place after Force Awakens. Uh, so actually, it takes, it takes place between... Uh, the Last Jedi mm-hmm. and this new movie that's coming out. Okay, okay. Uh, because there, yeah. there's going to be a, a rather large time gap between those two movies. Oh, interesting. Well, they have to. I mean, yeah. the, the resistance is only what's in the Falcon. Right, right, right. You know, right they right, need right. to have time to expand. Right. So, uh, <clears throat> anyway, so Hondo has it, and your job is to do certain jobs for him Right. that are quote-unquote legal. <laughs> See the and, smuggler comes back out of nowhere. Yeah, well, it's legal to me. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, and so you fly the Falcon, and depending yeah. on how well and how good you do, mm-hmm. it will affect what happens in the land. Yeah. Hondo may not like it because now the ship is dinged up. Right. It ter- looks terrible, barely running. Right. Mm-hmm. Maybe even alerted by the First Order in some way. It could be. Yeah. But also, if if you do so very very poorly, mm-hmm. uh, there will be a bounty hunter that will. Come find you. Oh. You will be trapped. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you'll be eating at the cantina, and then, sorry, the service has been discontinued, and then we want you to find this person. And there's a wanted thing with your name on it, hmm. probably, your your face. That's exciting. How many credits? Because there's also yeah. a credit system as well. Yeah, that's true. Uh, which that's they true. have not gone into detail as to how they're going to do it. Yeah. yeah. But that's all story yeah. Stuff. Mm-hmm. It's and the, crazy. And the food is going to be also Star Wars food. All Star with Wars all, food. Yeah. The shops itself yeah. has a backstory. Right. Mm-hmm. I could actually tell you, because I'm crazy, I could <laughs> tell you the story of the cantina. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was originally owned by a different guy right. who mm-hmm. lost the business. Right. Went to Oga. Now Oga is running it. Right. Mm-hmm. I could tell you how even Hondo Anaka got the Falcon because there's mm-hmm. books for it. Yeah. Yeah. She And that's what's crazy about it. Right. The toys there aren't like Disney branded. Yeah. yeah, they aren't toys. They are actually handmade from pieces of metal and fragments <laughs> that they find lying around. Yeah. So they're like one of a kind stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, even the the clothes that you find there, they're not t shirts. Right. Yeah. You know, they don't have. You know, they they will be Star Wars clothing. Mm-hmm. So it's all nuts. Everything's got a story. I love asking this question to people we interview. Mm-hmm. Is uh, do you have a story that you desperately want to tell? Um, there's a story I've been kind of working on for a while. It started a long, long time ago mm-hmm. when I was going through my uh, uh, depressive stage. Got gotcha. you. Um, I had this idea where the main character, 
battles with depression. Okay. Um, and but he finds out that there is like an an actual physical monster after him. The kind of twist is you realize it's just a a manifestation of his depression. There and, we go. See, we're, and, we're entering into the story. And the only way to defeat it is really him trying to deal with his own insecurities mm-hmm. and you know his mm-hmm. depression. Yeah. I uh, haven't really gotten any more further than that. I just thought it was a neat idea. Yeah. Uh, you know, me, I like to draw. So right. I was just drawing a bunch of ideas of what this monster would look like. Mm-hmm. Would it be an actual monster? Would it be more of a shadow? Mm-hmm. Would it, you know, wh- yeah. what kind of a thing it would be? And then, you know, maybe I could try to write a story around that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though other people tell me that I'm good at things all I th- the time. I think you're great. It's a point. <laughs> Musty creative. Uh-huh. And, and because of that, it's like, oh, I, I, I reached an impasse. That if I really look hard enough, I can find a way to do it. I just haven't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it just became stagnant, kind of like my other project, you know, well, Project Dust Bunny. Well, okay, yeah, mm-hmm. Project Dust Bunny. Mm-hmm. Um, but also there was another project that I actually never got to see uh, played out. But it was a play that you participated in years ago. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. But I heard good things about it. You had multiple showings. Yeah. And I think you had an on- encore showing because you, yes. you, you found a small audience. Yeah. Uh, who was your partner on that? Um, well, I didn't write it. Uh, right. That would be uh, Luigi Oliva. He's right. the one who actually wrote it. Right. And then I was my co-star was uh, Kyle. That's right, Kyle. Yeah. What? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, he, he played the villain. And then I played the the hero. Yeah, I guess. the protagonist. The protagonist. Yes. Um. So that was that was fun to do. Uh, basically, it was this ridiculous kind of a world in which nobody really cares about football, basketball, baseball. Mm-hmm. It was all about chess. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Because yeah, the, I uh-huh. remember the marketing for it. Yeah, chess. Yeah. The international chess tournament i forgot what the name of it was yeah but the acronym i think just spelled chess yeah <laughs> something like that uh but uh and that was the big thing like it was a world sport nice uh-huh. uh and there's this huge auditorium where people just come from all over the world to see yeah and um my father uh was a great chess player yeah and uh, he taught me how to play chess and was kind of teaching me his mm-hmm. ways. And then he died. Yeah. And then I ended up just kind of living my life. And uh, there was uh, when my father passed away in the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he passed away, then uh, Kyle's character, I forgot what it was. It was like a bad guy <laughs> name too, like yeah. Baron Von <laughs> Bad Guy or something. Yeah. And he uh, basically, he, he was the, the next... Uh, champion, and he would kept winning over and over mm-hmm. and over again, and he became too prideful, too cocky. Oh, okay. Uh, and so, uh, then I come around, and I'm like, I'm gonna do this for you, Pa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I do. Nice. But because Luigi wrote it with me in mind, yeah, he made my character a Star Wars nerd. Yeah. So there's a song. Yes. With a famous line <laughs> that I I literally heard fans of the show tell me, Hey, you got to check this out. It has this w- wonderful Star Wars song. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm wondering if that's Papa, if that's the song. I, possibly. There's, there's a song where I, I'm singing to, uh, to my dad. Okay. And meanwhile, I'm selling my Star Wars, uh, collectibles because. Yeah. Uh, the to enter the tournament, you have to pay a lot of money, mm-hmm. which I don't have because I went to Comic Con that year. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I ended up selling my collectibles. Yeah. And so I'm singing, the song, you know. I'm so sorry, Han Solo. <laughs> you know, and little Jawas with eyes that glow. Yes, sorry yes. To do this to you, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that was fun to do. But what was that? What was that line? The Star Wars in me, or sorry. oh man, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's the line I've, I've been hearing about that all these one. years. Uh, there is a thing where I have like a daydream okay. where I'm fighting uh, Darth Vader. I think <laughs> 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 it was ridiculous. Yeah. Oh man, I can't remember what it was. I have to re-listen to it. Uh, but yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, doing it. So you talk about a couple of things that are interesting in storytelling, right? You mm-hmm. you have a main character, yes. and they usually have some kind of mentor. Yes. Character die, right? Why yeah. do you think that is such a compelling, you know, storytelling theme or 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 plot device that people use all the time? Uh, because it pushes. The main character 
out of the nest. Okay. You know, it's mm. like it's it's hard to do it when the nest is on fire. Yeah. You, you have no point but to leave. And in some cases with Luke Skywalker, yeah. his nest was literally on fire. And, and, and his so aunt and uncle. Were... uncle were also on fire. Yeah. That's had... one of the worst scenes, I think, in all film history as far as like just the, the rawness of it. Because you go back, you just had milk. You just had blue milk with these guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're like toasted with their skeletons like, ah. Oh my and, uh, god! Which I cannot wait to have actually in uh, in the, in the Star Wars <laughs> Galaxy's <laughs> Edge. Yeah, yeah it comes full enough, circle. Not actual dairy. Hmm. Really? They're it's gonna, gonna be, be almond milk. It's a, yeah. It's gonna be yeah. plant based uh, dairy cool. basically. Yeah, Sweet. Uh, vegan. And no burning aunt and uncle. No, they decided to take that out of it. Unless okay. you want the winter version and they make it toasty. There we go. With the ashes of aunt and uncle. Burning. There you go. Uh, and uh, no, but yeah, there will be three uh, three different kinds. Blue milk, green milk, and frosted milk. Okay. All right, so let's continue the conversation. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you, so the the nest being on fire allows it, it has it pushes the protagonist forward. It gives them forward. no choice, right? Yeah. Um, you know, like they have to grow up. Yeah. You know, they have to mm-hmm. leave. They have to get going. Yeah. Especially if they're, you know, especially in Luke's case, Luke didn't want to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he did, but he didn't want to. He's like. Oh, he didn't nah, have. He even had the full motivation to leave. I couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, my aunt and uncle, they need me here. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and then oh, I guess they don't anymore. <laughs> and so he's just like, oh, Obi Wan, wait for me. Yeah. Hey, you still need me? I'm right. here now. Let's right. Do it. You know, I think there was a funny spoof about uh, about Star Wars. Yeah. Where it's like, there's no life for me here, or whatever. And it's like, oh, big sacrifice. Everyone you know is dead. There's yes. nobody holding you here. What kind of a big sacrifice? Like, it's supposed to be some big decision. Yeah, exactly. I forgot what that was, but... Mm-hmm. Oh, Thumb Wars. Oh, I haven't oh, watched that in a while. I have all of them. Yeah, she does. Yeah, Franken yeah. Thumb, yeah. the God Bat Thumb. thumb. Yeah. Bat Blair Thumb. Blair Thumb. Yeah. The Thumb Tannic. Yeah. Oh, my word. Okay. <laughs> and then, we we'll start to yeah. wrap this up, but another yeah, thing no. about story stuff that you mentioned in this play... Mm-hmm. And, and can you, what was the name again of, of the play? Checkmate. Checkmate. Yes. Um... Which and, I think is coming back. Ooh. Please let us know. Uh, Luigi's writing, uh, uh, writing more, more songs. We'll, we will get you. We can get you and Luigi on the podcast, and we would love to. I would. I need. I want to attend this because I missed out the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it might. Be. Or I could be in the show. I mean, know. I don't want to put don't myself wanna, out there. I, I don't want to to say too much because I don't know too much. Right. Mm-hmm. But the last I heard from Louis was that we there's a possibility we could have a venue. Okay. It's not a school or a cafeteria. Yeah. Like, you know, an actual theater. Right. That would be cool. So, uh, that would be fun to do. Um, I'm excited to do it. If it ever happens again, I'll be terrified, and we'll probably take some medications to deal with that. But, but Josh, you have a wonderful singing voice. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And you have acting talent. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So, I think you got it. Yeah. I'm too nervous, though. It's like I, I can act in front of, like, a mirror and stuff. Right. But once other people are around me, I shut down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... It's... Well, the Musty Collective will be here to support you, man. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. For and that. Um, yeah, so the whole thing, another thing you mentioned was uh, you had this, you know, this uh, antagonist, yes. this this champion chess player who got too yes. prideful. Yes. You know, you see it with Darth Vader, like yes. all all too easy. You see it with yeah. uh, other characters like Goliath. Like, yes. am, I, am I a dog? You come up with sticks? Like all throughout history and in, in comics, movies. Why why do we have these villain characters? And even in real life, I'm not gonna name real people's names, but. Why do we have these people that get too prideful? That just don't see their fall coming at the you know at the at the onset of of a sem of, of a so so weaker you know hero character. Well, I think it's just because it, it is in real life. Yeah, you know, it's, it's how you mm-hmm. make things relatable. I mean, it, it doesn't take much, right? You know, all it takes <laughs> is just uh, you know someone who is vastly more superior in their nerddom to say that I'm better than you. Mm. Mm, and he's just looking at me intensely. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I, everyone is better than me. That's why I'm on this podcast well, trying to but, learn from but everybody. But you see, everyone has their place. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm just above it. That's all. There's nothing wrong with wow. it. This guy. There's nothing wrong with this it. This guy. You know, the world works this way. Yeah. And, you know, it's good to be at the top sometimes. Okay. And then here comes the, the pride. For, but, you know, to be honest here, it's because everybody else is so much taller than me. <laughs> All it takes is me to be just a little bit taller than you. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. I'm immediately better than you. Mercy. <laughs> no, Mercy. but I, no, I... It's, it's because it's it's relatable. Yeah. Sadly. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know, at work, you see it all the time at work. Mm-hmm. You know, you're like, gosh, man, 
Jim, why do you have to do this to me? Not, not, not an office reference. Yeah, it's don't. Just no. a name that popped up in my Got head. you. No problem. Or, you know, like, it, it could be something simple. And so, all of a sudden, you're like, oh, there's that bad guy who is powerful or even a little bit powerful. Or maybe not as powerful. He doesn't know yet. Yeah. But the good guy yeah. is more powerful. Yeah. But because he thinks that he knows that he's prideful and therefore yeah. it's just, it's, rel- it's relatable. You're like, oh, that Darth Vader, he's uh-huh. totally that boss I have at work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, he thinks he's better than me. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I think that's kind of how it works. I mean, yeah. Because yeah. I think everybody sort of feels like an underdog at some yeah. point. So they and they would obviously want the underdog to win in the end. Right. Yeah. So I think it makes sense. Otherwise, it'd be a terrible cartoon. <laughs> yeah. And then at some point, even though every once in a while it's nice to see the villain win, like that's one thing that's great about Infinity War because Thanos actually wins. Yeah. But in the end, you, you hope that full circle, good will win. Well, it depends mm-hmm. on your definition of win. Oh, hmm. well, I think I think Thanos snapping and killing half the universe is winning for him. Yeah, well, he could have <laughs> died. It could have easily not have been a win. Yeah, yeah. He could have been one of the. <laughs> he could have been one of the people. Yeah, that... I, I think he would be okay with that as long as the universe balances out. Well, really, he would have mm-hmm. no choice. True, it would have happened regardless. Mm-hmm. True, true, true. Mm-hmm. All right, so. Uh, thank you for being on the show. I of just have, I have one Sorry, more question. Sorry, I, I talked too much and was rambled on. No, no, this has been great. <laughs> kind of like yeah, what no, I'm this, doing now. No, so. no, this is awesome. I'm just uh, postponing the show. <laughs> he really wants us to stay. <laughs> all right, no, um, favorite movie of all time, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you this very specific question. One movie, favorite movie of all time. One movie, favorite of all time. All time. I'd go with Return of the Jedi. Ooh, my man. My <laughs> man. That's my favorite Star Wars movie. My man. It was the first one I ever saw, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, not in the theater. It just, I rented it. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. my mom was taking too long at Albertsons. Really? <laughs> and in Albertsons at the time, they had little VHS tapes at the yeah. front of the store. VHS. Went All right. over there. Man, and yeah. Saw the box art. And I'm like, oh, look, there's little bears on it. Mm-hmm. That's going to be cool. And my mom, my mom, <laughs> you know, my mom was like, oh, it's got little bears. That's not so bad. So she rented it for me. And then yeah. I watched it. And then my mind was blown. And I was like, yeah. what's happening? Well, granted, everything was ruined for me. Cause <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it didn't yeah. matter as a kid. I'm like, I have to see it all. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's kind of, yeah, I would say that's it. Mm-hmm. That final uh, battle, um, and Luke is hiding from Darth Vader, and then he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna find your sister." And he's oh, like, yeah. cool. "Never!" Yeah. Oh. The and the music, like, "Who's the sister?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guy... Leia. Oh no, yeah. who's she? And then, it, wait, well, how did you how did you feel when they you saw his, uh, her kiss him on the on the lips you know, in the Empire? Totally went over my head. Oh really? As a kid, he's like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, I just I don't know. I was just like, yeah." It was almost like if my mind was only focused on this, just that one movie, and yeah, I completely yeah, yeah. ignored the others. <laughs> yeah. Until I got older and rewatched it, and I was just like, what the? <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, but yeah, I would say that. Yeah. And besides that, it would either have to be one of the Indiana Jones movies or Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Crystal Skull. Definitely Crystal Skull. I didn't mind it. <laughs> Crystal Skull, really? <laughs> I t- I'm trolling, I'm trolling, it. I'm trolling. I'm not trolling. I don't <laughs> mind it. No, I know you don't mind it, but is that your favorite? No. Okay, that's... Yes. <laughs> All but right. It's good. definitely better than Raiders, though. Really? Raiders of the Lost Ark? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm trolling, man. <laughs> oh, Wrap the episode. Oh, Wrap the... Just stop. Here we go. Turn All off right. the mic. Uh, so, off. if you have uh, projects you're working on in 2019, you want to be featured on the show... Just hit us up on Instagram or Twitter. Let us know. We would love to have you, just like we had Josh on today. Musty Collective, we're all grouped together, just raising the bar together, learning and growing. And again, motivating ourselves to become better storytellers. Um, if you want to find us, you can find us on Twitter.com slash Musty Creative, Instagram.com slash The Musty Creative, and Anchor.fm slash Musty. Also, to let you know, I actually wrote some code today on the website. It's actually looking really good. We're going to have it uploaded soon for your enjoyment and then we'll be able to form a bigger community online together and uh that's all we have to say so remember to leave us a review on itunes leave a five-star review please and find <laughs> us on all our social medias and contacts and now it's time to shower up Ooh. <laughs> i feel weird <laughs> just here now what am i gonna do